You have read the cartoons, seen the action-packed special effects extravaganza Spider-Man movies. You have even been on the ahead of its time, innovative action-packed dark ride, The Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man at Universal's Islands of Adventure. This could be the most dangerous night of my life and yours. Perhaps you're even excited about the interactive Spider-Man web slingers attraction at the Disneyland Resort. Spider-Man does whatever a spider can. This latest Spidey attraction offering is not the first ride letting you sling webs at Spider-Man's foes. No, no, no. There was another. An attraction that combined a dark ride, interactive shooting, and Spider-Man. One that was called the Ultimate Ride. Was it, though? No, not really. Hey, Spidey friends. It's your old pal Spider-Man here, and I need your help. It appears that the city's biggest villains are all on the prowl. Niagara Falls isn't on the list of the seven natural wonders of the world. However, many consider it to be one drawing visitors from all over the world to see the three waterfalls on the border between Ontario and New York. Visitors to the attraction steadily increased throughout the 20th century, until over 20 million visitors would head to the site each year. With so much footfall to the area, one industry would boom, tourist attractions. The sonorous thunder of Niagara Falls bids welcome good neighbor to almost 3 million visitors every year. The first boom would come in the 1920s, on a street called Clifton Hill. Many more visitors were coming to the falls due to the increase of vehicles. Hotels and campgrounds would pop up all over to meet the demand. This would continue throughout the 50s. During the 60s, Clifton Hill would see more and more unique museums built such as the Hollywood Wax Museum, Ripley's Believe It or Not, House of Frankenstein, and basically any type of tourist attraction that you could think of. Located just a short distance from the waterfalls, the area would become known as the Street of Fun, jam-packed full of chain restaurants and tourist offerings. Attraction changes came thick and fast on the street with many being renamed or re-themed throughout the years, becoming the second busiest tourist destination in the city. It is important to note that Marvel at this time was a completely different company than it is today. Their rival, DC, dominated the film industry with successes like Superman and Batman. Marvel, on the other hand, had attempted to find success but ultimately failed with multiple botched attempts to license Marvel in the 90s. By 1995, Marvel were heavily in debt and were only saved by merging with toy company Toy Biz. Because of their financial troubles, they would package up and sell off the rights to their characters to different companies, one being Universal Pictures. In The Adventures of Spider-Man, we literally get dropped into the pages of a comic book. Please spell my name in time to blow you off the street. In 1996, Universal began creating a brand new, state-of-the-art attraction for its upcoming Islands of Adventure theme park. After a deal fell through to gain the DC rights to use in the park, they would turn to Marvel. What would come would be the highlight attraction of Marvel's Superhero Island, an attraction that was estimated to cost around $100 million. The Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man would open with the park in 1999 and be based on the comics of Marvel Spider-Man. The motion-based 3D dark ride received critical acclaim as one of the best attractions ever created. Universal would once again use their theme park rights to the character to create Spider-Man Rocks in 2002. Yeesh, my spider senses are tingling. This one was a stinker. <laughs> During the early 2000s, Marvel would continue to sell the rights off for tourism usage in countries outside the US. 2003 saw Spider-Man come to the UK with a Spider-Man stunt show at Thorpe Park. What would come to Canada, though, would be completely different. Okay, this I like. In 2000, Marvel would publish a new comic based around Peter Parker, Ultimate Spider-Man. 
This new version of the story would modernise the long running series as the first of the Ultimate Marvel lineup that would go on to cover many classic characters, each retelling and expanding on their story. And it would be this version of the character, kinda, that would head to Niagara Falls. Two years later, it was announced that the first ever Marvel Adventure City would come to that touristy street near the falls. Located at Clifton Hill and Falls Avenue would be a brand new 30,000 square foot retail and entertainment complex featuring Marvel comic based rides, arcades, food and merchandise. This would be announced as the prototype for the first of many similar ventures that would be scheduled to open around the US. It was hoped that within the next three to five years, the new Marvel attraction would find further homes in Los Angeles and many other top US locations. Welcome to the creative world of Dark Rider, the amusement industry's most innovative dark ride company. Founded in St. Louis, Missouri, a company called Halloween Productions began business by constructing haunted houses. Firstly, for themselves, before others requested that they would do the same and began creating full walkthrough attractions, hayrides and live shows. Some notable examples of their work include The Haunted Mansion, not that one, the one on 192, and Skull Kingdom in Orlando, as well as multiple haunted houses for theme parks such as Busch Gardens Tampa, Paramount Parks and Six Flags. After their success, the company would split and start another division called Dark Rider. They would be the first amusement company to market black light based attractions. The company would do everything from design, storyboard, model and fabricate attractions. The first of which would be the Haunted Mansion Dark Ride at Casino Beach Pier in New Jersey. Shortly followed in 2003, the majority of what awaited inside the new Marvel Super Heroes Adventure City. As you entered this building, Spider-Man hung from the roof facing off against Green Goblin. Inside would be five main attractions. These would be the Spider-Man and Friends Fun House, which was an area for the little superheroes, advertised as even Spider-Man, the Hulk and X-Men were kids at one time, who would want to play in this playground featuring slides, ball pits and climbing equipment. Daredevil Obstacle Challenge allowed visitors to see if they had what it took to be a superhero. To do that, you would have to race each other and the clock for an obstacle course. Only one would have the stuff of heroes. X-Men bumper carts asked riders to strap in and get ready for combat. You were able to shoot your opponents or bash them with your car to earn points. Again, proving you had what it took to be a hero and defeat evil. Next would be the Incredible Hulk Encounter, a walkthrough experience where the Hulk had escaped in a military base and destroyed the labs. Wearing 3D glasses, it was essentially a haunted house walkthrough that the company had had many years of experience making. This time, only with the Hulk in it. It offered multiple different routes throughout where you had to try and avoid his destructive path. Finally, the main attraction itself, the Dark Ride, Spider-Man, the Ultimate Ride. Dark Rider got a big break when we were contracted to design and create Spider-Man's Ultimate Ride, which took the idea of a very modest budgeted Dark Ride to new levels. The client demanded to see Spider-Man fight the Green Goblin. No one has ever done something like this in a Dark Ride with a budget around $600,000. But Dark Rider accepted the opportunity and the challenge. Please behold Dark Rider's very first real Dark Ride creation, Spider-Man's Ultimate Ride. While mostly based on the Ultimate comics, it was somewhat of a weird mix of classic and Ultimate designs, with a touch of Sam Raimi's trilogy thrown in for fun. Designed and built by Blacklight Attractions, part of Haunted Productions, inside was a shooting, interactive Dark Ride, where you could battle Spider-Man's arch enemies in a, uh, edge of your seat adventure it's your old pal spider-man here and i need your help paying 13 dollars each the slow moving attraction would use 3d glasses not your usual theme park 3d glasses however but the paper kind that you could often find given with comic books themselves it began as spider-man who doesn't sound like the 15 year old kid from the ultimate comics rather a 35 year old informed you that the city's villains were on the prowl 
and to help you had to shoot the coloured targets throughout the ride to defeat the enemies with your web gun. Yeah, yeah, I hear those villains escaped. Well, make sure Parker gets me some pictures. I gotta go. Oh, so you're the saps who are helping out Spider-Man, huh? You know, it's probably his fault all those costume clowns are running around the city. Spider-Man's just another criminal like the- Riders would find Scorpion, Lizard, Electro, Green Goblin, and of course, Dr. Octopus. Quick, shoot the bricks so they'll fall on top of him and bury him. Yeah. take the sting out of the scorpion. As you went through the ride, Spidey would inform you what you would have to do to defeat the villains. It looks like Electro is experiencing a major power outage. The more targets you hit, the safer the streets of New York would become. Mind if I tag along? Get off my glider, wicked. Let's see how well you fly without these wires. <laughs> For the ride itself, the attraction's budget was just $600,000, quite the difference to the $100 million used to create the Universal Studios attraction. Dark Rider would use every cent of that budget to try and create something fun, a small, unique, a Marvel-based experience, and in some ways they succeeded. I guess we found the right prescription for this doctor. For those who visited the attraction though, it was disappointing. It was expensive to ride and poorly maintained from the opening. The attraction itself was not terrible. It could actually be kind of fun when fully working, but it was just too expensive to ride for what it was. The reviews were quite damning and the whole center was often found having to give full refunds. The place's poor maintenance also affected the experience with the guns often not working or the ride fully coming to a stop. They tried to remedy this in 2004 when the attraction systems and effects were upgraded, but what was inside though remained mostly the same and it still did not help. The Hulk walkthrough only lasted two years until it was closed and replaced with a blacklight Incredible Hulk mini goal, created once again by the same company. In 2008, the very same year Iron Man would be released, a Marvel would be set on its path to worldwide success after multiple failed attempts, and just one year before Disney would purchase the company, the signs for Marvel Super Heroes Adventure City were removed, and all references to the comic book characters were hastily covered over. The entertainment facility was heading for bankruptcy, and they were unable to continue paying the licensing of the comic book characters losing the rights to use them. This once exciting idea would never get to become the franchise around the US it intended to be. What remained open was a stripped down version of the attractions. Spidey and Friends Funhouse was now called Spikey and Friends. The Hulk was gone from the mini golf and for a short time, the Spider-Man attraction was just called the Man Ride. It reopened shortly after the comic book characters were removed and was now known as Urban Jungle. Surprisingly, this attraction still exists today. Now just called Adventure City, inside much of the experience remains very similar to its former theme. The bumper cars still battle as traffic jam bumper cars. The mini golf is a little less angry with a wild safari theme. And most importantly, you can still battle villains on a ride now called Super Heroes Laser Ride. Very creative. Once again, you fight the forces of evil through the city streets using photon phasers to bring them to justice. The ride is very much the same, 18 years after opening, only just a little less marvelous. Hey, you really helped your old pal Spider-Man. Thanks to you, we restored order and put those villains behind bars. But watch out. You never know when I might need your help again. Thanks a lot, spider friends. The small St. Louis Haunt Attraction Company would continue to grow after its first dark ride. They would go on to create other interactive dark rides around the world, including the Garfield's Nightmare Attraction at Kennywood, which is a fascinating story by itself. If you have been to a 3D mini golf 
or Blacklight Escape Room, it's quite likely you have experienced one of their offerings. When it came to creating this expedition on this weird Marvel attraction in Canada, I fully expected to tell a tale of a terrible copycat attraction that was a rip-off in the tourist heart of Niagara Falls. However, while it wasn't exactly good, dark rides are expensive and using blackout cutouts mixed with screens was actually quite innovative with the budget they had to tell a Spider-Man story. Especially for such a small attraction-based company from St. Louis who had only built haunted houses until that point. The real tragedy of this attraction was how the Adventure City was poorly run and maintained, even using the Men in Black images on their promotional advertising of the attraction a ride that would charge too much for what it was and leave many disappointed. As a standalone attraction, it could, and to this day, does kind of work, as long as your expectations are not swinging too high. While many will see this as a knockoff universal ride, it wasn't really. It was an attraction that was created on an incredibly small budget that Haunted Productions designed at a cost over 150 times less than the Amazing Spider-Man ride. There are places in the world for cheaper attractions. And for me, the more dark rides, the better. Sadly, this one just wasn't really the ultimate Spider-Man attraction. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Expedition Extinct. If you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to join the expedition. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram for updates on upcoming episodes and a special thank you to our Patreons for supporting the channel. We will see you next time.